All right, everybody. Hi, and welcome to the official Body Spartan Podcast. My name is Gabe Tuft. I am the founder of Body Spartan and your host for the next hour. Tonight, I am joined by the lovely, luscious, delicious, wonderful, one of a kind, beautiful Aww. wife material. You're so I'm sweet. Second. First lady of Body Spartan. This is Priscilla Tuft. There we go. Uh, you know, I almost said second lady of Body Spartan because I was thinking like second in command. Were you the first? What the hell? Exactly. That <laughs> left all of us really confused. What is going on in this podcast studio tonight? Some crazy shit. Now we're talking about using the E factor to break through self limitation. But as always, before we dive into the main content tonight, we got a killer announcement to make. You want to do it or do you want me? We got a new baby in the house. We do. We got a bun. We have been pregnant for a while and the baby is here and the baby's going to change everybody's lives. It is called Revolution. And it's live. Guys, Revolution, the female fitness program written, developed, designed, created by Priscilla Tuft is now live and available for purchase. This is my heartbeat, you guys. This is a big freaking deal. It's pretty damn cool. It Um, It goes beyond fitness in the gym. It goes beyond a diet and workout. This is emotional fitness, spiritual fitness. If you are dealing with emotions and self-limiting beliefs that have stopped you in the past from reaching your goals, you need to get this program. Well, I think everybody has dealt with self-limiting beliefs, whether they think they have or not, which is actually something we'll talk about later today. That's actually the entire premise of what we're talking about tonight. <laughs> but some super cool stuff about Revolution. Uh, ladies, since this is your program, uh, and guys, if you're listening, you need to tell your ladies about this because it's going to blow their minds. This is the first program ever in the fitness industry, the first program ever to have integrated in it cutting edge neuro hacking techniques. Dun, 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 dun. Literally, Priscilla has done or had and still has done extensive research into uh, some neuroscience and it's amazing guys uh, and, and girls I'm talking to the girls now I always say guys when I'm talking to the ladies this this program has ways to literally this program has ways to reprogram <laughs> this <laughs> revolution has ways to reprogram allow myself to introduce myself <laughs> On that awkward note, we seriously have some crazy stuff for you guys. There's this neurohacking audio that you listen to each night when you go to sleep. Whether you do the program or not, you're going to get results just listening to this program on a nightly basis. Sometimes it works for people in one session. Other people, it can take 90 days. But if you're listening to this audio every single day, you will get results. You will want to work out. You will see yourself as the essence of who you truly were created to be. You will become empowered. Well, it's literally going to reprogram your brain. And something that we've been studying for a long time is that your brain is basically like a computer. It has... uh, we started this with binaural beats way back in the day when I was still in WWE. We discovered binaural beats, which is basically brainwave entrainment. So it basically uh, you take a set of earbuds or headphones and you have a system where it pumps one frequency into one ear and a different frequency into another ear with a very small difference, something that you can't actually hear. So it's like a difference of five hertz and you can't hear five hertz. But your brain will recognize. And the don't step. worry, they don't hurt. No, they don't if you don't hurt. know what hurts are, they don't hurt. <laughs> but <laughs> well, I'm not. I'm not being ridiculous. Like people no. sometimes are like, "Oh, that sounds painful." No, hurts are not painful. Who says that? They're empowering. Who says? People that don't know about brain waves and and frequency mm, megahertz a hertz h e t r. You know, there are a Z. lot of people that don't know. Like who? Go ahead, speak up. Wait. Oh, yeah, I don't hear anybody. Everybody knows what a hertz is. So on that derogatory note, <laughs> I, we are not being, I was being very optimistic that everybody knew about that. <laughs> so the point is, this fucking program is amazing. And it has cutting edge techniques that have never been used in any fitness program ever. We're the first to bring it to the industry, first in the space, bringing it to you. Revolution, you want a 30-day trial, we're going to give it to you. Bodyspartan.com forward slash revolution bodyspartan.com forward slash revolution guys tell all your ladies about it it is a 12-week transformation program ladies pick up your phone right now type in the web address bodyspartan.com forward slash revolution unless you're driving 
And then if you are driving, wait to get the stoplight. <laughs> ah, <laughs> I love that's, that's it. I and and gentlemen, if your women are whack emotionally, like I have been through those moments and and a huge part of my life, <laughs> whack emotionally, we are getting a, into those issues. Is this a test? Am I, do I answer that? Do I smile? Do I just... I mean, you can just chuckle like and act catch- like it's not me. <laughs> See, that works. Okay, cool. And maybe don't make eye contact when you yeah, do that. Yeah, I avoided that for a while. So, yeah, I mean, we all have crap that we have to deal with and most of that is coming from our own belief system we're going to get into this tonight you guys we are talking about something near and dear to my heart with a term that i have coined because it is such a prevalent issue keeping us from meeting our fitness goals and any goal in our life well let's just jump right in and get right to the nitty-gritty tonight since howard's not here i actually don't know what howard's doing i miss our little ginger boy i know i I need a hug I, I need some of his color commentary on the podcast. Or I, maybe Brandon kicking my chair around in circles. It's fire season. Well, so. Brandon actually was supposed to do a workout with me. He was begging. He, he swung by the house like, hey, bro, just checking. I was actually oh, putting today? on the. No, this was uh, when I was putting on the new exhaust on the bike, which actually, by the way, guys, uh, in the never ending saga of my R1, I bought a brand new Graves racing exhaust. And Graves, so you guys know, is the Yamaha uh, racing team. And they talked me through the whole thing. It was kind of cool. I felt like a stud. I, I pulled everything off. It sounds like an Indian word. Yamaha. Yamaha. Dude, that is that racist? Is that, I mean, how do we even think about that? No, I was like, I mean, Native oh, American. Oh, Yamaha. No, oh, my no, gosh. No. You just edit? did that. No. Ah, what? I can't edit that. <laughs> no, but, but doesn't it kind of seem like an Indian? I, I'm sorry. I digress. Oh, my gosh. Well, anyway. So we have a Yamaha. I was just going to say, I felt like a stud because I was out there with my laptop and the, you know, all these cords plugged in the computer on the bike, basically tuning the thing by myself for this Greg's, Graves exhaust. And now it just sounds so sweet. And I was just so proud of you for doing it by yourself. And I, I was like know. praying. I was like acting like I wasn't engaged. But I'm like, and you know what oh, the coolest part is? Bike. It's so much more powerful and faster and it's loud when i pull back the hammer on that thing for all the guys that are listening priscilla shut your ears i can't keep the front wheel down in first or second gear so in triple digits the front wheels up it's crazy but i love it but i was on the back the other day <laughs> and i'm like i'm scared oh, like yeah. what did i say i think i'm really scared no, you just said, i'm scared i'm scared I actually i priscilla got it was her, like it was like a freak I, out I, moment i, I, freak, I the felt wheelie. I felt the wheel come up off the ground and I seriously thought I was going to throw up my appendix. <laughs> I don't even know if you Your could do appendix. Uh-huh. Something, something was coming up that I was not used to. I was like, that was not. I'm usually very conservative with Priscilla on the bike. And for some reason, except I just for when he passes and... three cars at 120 miles an hour and acts like, I don't know. I didn't know you looked at the speedometer. Why do you think I like give you the nudge? That's not such a very polite nudge. I'm like, not cool, about. dude. <laughs> it was totally cool. I think I'm scared. <laughs> when, I don't even know. It was like one of those impulse things like where you sound so like you idiotic. Know you know what? You're enough. That's all I got to say. Oh, my gosh. Thank you. Oh, transition You're into enough too. the E factor. OK, guys. So tonight using the E factor to break through self limitation. And of course, you guys are going, what the fuck is the E factor? We're not going to tell you this whole entire podcast. We're not going to tell you. No, we're just going to talk about the E factor. We're not going to say anything about it. Actually, this is something that everybody deals with. And it's a, a term that Priscilla created and coined. It's. Your enoughness factor is what she calls it. Mm. And I, I don't want to step on your toes when I say this. No, so if please, I, go if ahead. I say anything wrong, because again, this these are Priscilla's uh, bullet points here, and I'm, I'm a part of it, but this is really her mastermind tonight. So I don't want to steal the spotlight like I always do. Because that's what I do. I steal the spotlight. I do that. Well, you look really, really good in it. I so know. actually, he's in compression pants tonight, you guys. Oh, something so sad happened. You guys... He almost dropped the bike. And when he oh, did, oh, t- well, say what happened. My well, heart's so many, like broken. You know what? I, I, okay, we keep trying Speaking to get of the to the R1, main topic. We keep talking about the bike. I mean, it was it was a pretty epic week for me. I've been trying for, since I got this bike to get my knee down. I finally got the knee down. Uh, and so I'm, you know, I'm dragging the pucks. For those of you that don't, that don't know, when you get your knee down on a sport bike, it's kind of uh, not like the ultimate. It doesn't mean you're, a, you know, the best of the best. It just means that you've. You've mastered body positioning on the bike, and you can get as low as you possible. Are you drag your knee on the ground physics. as you go around a corner. So, you know, I had a great time. I found a parking lot today. I was practicing, uh, you know, left turns, right turns, getting getting a, knees. A down. parking lot meaning the casino. No, actually, I I can't oh. go back there because now I've noticed these guys riding around on bicycles with bright green security shirts. Ah! 
<laughs> and I think they're there just because of me doing circles. Got your knee lot. down though, right here, brother. Yeah, I did. High five. Oh wait, is is that so, was that lame? Should it be knuckles? And knuckles. Okay, knuckles. So I went over to Sonoma State University and I found a giant parking lot there with no like lines on it to make me dizzy. Like it was all flat. I'm like, no way. How did this happen? So and I'm next just, time, I was guys, out there just guys in know, bicycles with lights, second gear, just <laughs> running, running big old circles, dragging knees. It was great. I come home. Uh, open the garage, pull the bike in, put the kickstand down, and I guess I didn't put the kickstand down hard enough and it popped back up and I didn't hear it for some reason. <laughs> because the bike so was so crappy. damn loud. And I just went to get up off the bike and down it goes. And I caught it about two inches from uh, the ground. Like he would have thrown our newborn child on the ground to like protect the bike. So the bike weighs 439 <laughs> pounds. Catch this. Okay. I caught it two inches from the ground and as I'm standing there trying to muscle it back up, as I'm still straddling the bike, I feel this intense, sharp shooting pain in my calf. And I'm like, what the fuck is, oh my gosh, my legs on the exhaust. <laughs> so, so lame. That must either have, did you scream or like, no, what did I you just, do? I, literally I can't said, even imagine the pain. Out loud, I said, shit. And that was it. I'm just like, okay, my leg's burning. I know it's going to be really bad, but I'm not dropping this damn bike. So I just slowly and methodically muscled it up and as soon as I got it up I just moved my leg a little bit and put the kickstand on and I had so I had my compression pants on uh as I had shorts on I was riding to the gym and when I ride to the gym it's it's a mile so I always put the compression pants on so I don't get cold and if my shorts fly up nobody sees my nuts we don't want that but or do we the the oh no. man I got inside yes, and no. I put I put ice on it and you're not supposed to put ice on it but I put an ice pack on it anyway because it hurts so fucking bad Priscilla comes home. She's like, "Oh, dude, let me see." And I like, actually, I can I can I freeze frame for yeah, just a moment? Because I want to talk to talk to you guys for a second about the power of your freaking minds. You are capable of creating your reality thought by thought. So I walk in. I know my husband's been writing. Mia and I come back home, and the guy's sitting on the couch with his leg propped up. And I'm like, "Oh, how are you, baby?" But I was like, "Uh oh," and. In that split second of time where I say, how are you, baby? And he goes, oh, you know what? And I heard kind of the tone of voice. I'm like deciding what occurred. And in my mind, I cut off my fear. I said, laying down the bike is not an option. That did not happen. What happened is that he's totally fine. Like he's he's totally okay. He did not lay the bike down. Like I know he's all right. And it was it was in the next moments he told me what happened and he was icing it. But we can decide in that split second how we want the universe to shift. We can do it with a prayer. We can do it with a thought. But convincing ourselves that we're not going to be addicted any longer to the path of negative thinking and negative expectation because life is out to do you good. So that was my little powerful prayerful manifestation i mean the, all i was getting at is that it was you asked how bad it was or maybe you didn't but i'm gonna tell everybody how bad it was. i was at my leg on a on an ice pack and by the time i pulled it off there's just like blood spots all over the towel because yeah it, but did I you die no i don't you know that shit doesn't bother me like, see i was like i was thinking for a second this is the stuff that goes through like, a wife's brain when had, she walks you in you really or, had no clue until you're like how are you i'm like eh and then I look and I see his leg up and I went around the corner, decided what I wanted to believe about the situation. But in that moment, the thing that goes through your mind is as a, as, what what are we as wives? We're, we're irrational and we make up these stories in like a split second of what could possibly happen. Fucking head cases? I mean, I'm just saying. We, we have Maybe different- Maybe not you, but I know some wives that are, definitely not you. I, I think I go I go straight from zero to crazy in like 60 seconds. Like, because I'm like, oh my gosh. I mean, I'm not a crazy girl, but 2. 3 our mind, 2.3 seconds, right? <laughs> so we go through these like pathways in our minds and you guys do this too. Don't, don't listen to this and act like you don't do it. It's like, oh, um, the wife doesn't call back. Oh, she might be talking to another man. She might be talking to 10 men. I'm not good enough. Like, and, and you like go through this little thing and then you cut it off and you're like, that's ridiculous. What was I even thinking? And like, if we can harness our brain's ability to compute properly and understand things are working out for our good, things are positive. You know what I call that? What do you call it? Well, I don't actually have a term for it, but basically what I do when I start thinking like that, I'm like, it's something weird like that, like, oh, you know, she's probably at the gym and there might be a, actually, I don't, I don't think that anymore. I used to think that, but I would take that yeah, weird, kind of like an old all these negative thoughts that I would have about at a certain time in my life, I would just take them and I literally take them and grab my hands around, you know, my imaginary brain and. 
I just tossed him to another parallel dimension. Dude, yes. The, the totally. Tossing, I feel like. That's like what I felt like I did today when I saw you on that couch. I had to choose multiple to grab outcomes. them. Yeah, in your own in your own simulation that you're living. So, and by the way, Elon Musk, founder of Tesla, has stated that the possibility of us not being in a simulation, this life that we're living, not being in like a computer matrix style simulation is not, is it not, let, let's see. Basically what I'm like trying, I'm, I'm trying to think about how I, I thought it this. sounded great. Uh, I'm the clapping. possibility of us being in a simulation is far greater than it is the possibility of us not being in a simulation. And he had a bunch of science to prove that. And I was like, holy shit. But that just going to say, you when are you, creating with your mind. When you decide, and I have no proof of this, it's all anecdotal, but I feel like there's those moments when you're at a crossroad in your life and you have a choice to make. And it's like the old choose your own adventure books where you go one path and it, you know you turn to page 48, you know, <laughs> and you go the other, turn to page 32, and you start deciding where you're going to go. You give me you, butterflies in my tummy every time you talk about it. The, because I know the what you're dimension. talking about. Yes. Yeah, and I, I'm sure you guys can relate to it. Maybe you don't feel my, like you're tossing My things. version of it is a lot less sci-fi. Well, you just basically, you, you, you have all the shit going through your path. head. You have Red all the shit going through your Blue head. Pill. And you go, okay, I'm going to believe this is true. And then it very well might be. Or you go, no, this ain't true. And I'm going to take it on my head and toss it. And I toss it in another parallel dimension. There's another Gabe in you know, another dimension that actually lives that life. Sorry, Gabe. And that's where all of our <laughs> that's where all of our no thank you things go. We just shoot it to somewhere else. Okay. It's like the no the no thank you stuff. But I feel like that is so critical in what we're talking about tonight because so much of what we tell you guys is about harnessing the power of your mind so that you can achieve excellence in your life, so that you can live in infinite power. Because you were created by an infinite creator who created you to create your own life. You are not a victim. You're in control. And we're going to talk about that. Well, the you're not enoughness factor or the you're, you're not enoughness. The E factor. Well, the E factor is the enoughness factor. But right. what really gets us is the thought that we are not enough, that we are lacking somewhere, somehow. And, you know, I really thought when I won my first fitness competition, if I just win my first fitness competition, I'll be enough. So I did it. And I was probably worse off than I started with. And I'm like, oh, well, you know, maybe when I am married, I'll be enough. Maybe when I'm a mother, I'll be enough. Maybe when I write my first book, I'll be enough. Maybe when I, maybe when I, you're never enough. Now, enough for who? Are we talking about enough for your spouse, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your mom, your it's dad, or yourself? It's enough within. This is an inner dialogue, you guys, that's going on. And every single person on the face of this planet wonders at one time or another if they're enough. Now, Explain to me how this affects you on a daily basis. So how do you feel like you may not be enough? But just in your daily routine. Oh my gosh. Okay. Um, the alarm goes off and I throw the phone against the wall, not wanting to hear it. I'm not enough. I didn't get up on time. I, I okay. Can, so can now can that I'm, that, now way. that I'm running late, I only have time for a cup of coffee and to run out the door, which means that I missed my morning cardio. Not enough. Not enough for what? You're not good enough as a not enough for mom, me. wife kind of thing. Not enough for me. Not enough to meet my standards. But then again, when I bark at my child for not being into the car fast enough, <laughs> not enough as a mother. Forgetting to kiss my husband goodbye, not enough as a wife. Yeah, you, and so it's like this inner, I, I mean. Terrible person, you. <laughs> though, I know, right? It's like this perfectionist thing that we think that we're all supposed to fit into. And we struggle in different areas with this. Um, for Gabe, um, how do you feel like you're not enough? I mean, let's just be honest with people. I I really had to think about this before we started the podcast because this is a very touchy, not, not touchy one for me, but I had to really dig deep because when I first looked at the notes and I first looked at the subject, I'm like, this is not something that I deal with. I honestly, for quite a while, I, as I was reviewing this, I'm like, I don't have this I'm not enough thing because I'm very confident in who I am. Don't make me be the peanut butter to your jelly. I will tell these people right now. Hold the <laughs> fucking iPhone already. And I will also hold the secrets. Hold the iPhone X already, okay? <laughs> what I'm getting at is that I, adorable. I, in my daily life, I don't have a lot of time to think that I'm not enough. 
I have very mm. little time in my day. I want most you guys of, to remember he said that. Most of my time goes towards trying to create new innovative ways to push Body Spartan forward and to extend our message. And one of the reasons that my time goes to that is because the life cycle of a product nowadays is about six months. If you don't innovate something new in every six months, you don't think about a new way to push your company forward with new technology or new products, you don't innovate, you become obsolete. So my job as CEO of Body Spartan is not only to make sure the company stays afloat and keeps running and is profitable, but now I gotta think ahead to the future. So my brain is constantly full of, I mean, I, I sit up here in the office for hours and hours. Sometimes I spend 12, 14 hours up here. Other times I spend three, it just depends on the day. But whatever I'm doing, even when I'm not in the office, I'm thinking and I'm researching and I'm looking through, you know, I'm doing my PD, my personal development. I'm listening to Gary Vaynerchuk. I'm listening to Tony Robbins. And I'm trying to think of ways to get ahead. I want you so, guys to observe the schedule, by the way, and take note of it because we're going to talk about this later. This is powerful stuff. Uh, and so I have very little time to go. Uh, I'm not enough because if I start going. I'm not enough for Priscilla or I'm not enough. I'm, I'm not a good enough dad down the rabbit hole. Then all of a sudden my vibrational state changes. I become very I quickly locked up in that downward spiral. Like you said, down the rabbit hole and I become negative and I start going, oh shit. And you know what? What? Here's what it boils down to. I feel like I'm not enough as a husband because I take time to myself. Like I take the bike out for an hour a day. Usually maybe two hours sometimes depending on the day because I just need to get the fuck out of the office I'm going stir crazy and when I do that I go fuck I'm being selfish because I could be spending that time with my wife and my daughter But then I have no time to my fucking self. I don't watch TV as we very well have Displayed covered whatever you want to say on podcast before I don't watch any fucking TV except At 11 45 at night when I need to fall asleep when I turn on South Park <laughs> And it lulls me to bed kind of like it does with Tony Robbins but I don't watch not TV. that Tony Robbins lulls him to sleep. Tony Robbins also watches that garbage to fall asleep. That's, that's what he's saying. That, I'm like the way yes. that that would do. Thank you for the clarification. Like we are huge advocates of Tony Robbins. <laughs> so while a lot of people will sit there and they'll waste their life watching TV, I will go take the, you know, take the R1 out and go rip through some canyons. When I come home and I go, oh shit, I got to go to the gym still because that's number one on the party list because I'm the fucking poster. Not only the CEO, I'm the fucking poster boy of this goddamn company. I go, okay, I got to go to the gym. Um, all right, I'll be home. And like tonight, I, I went out. I, I rode the bike for two hours. You called to say you were taking Mia to the park. Do you want to go? I was like, shit, I'm looking for a parking lot to go you know, practice some knee drags. And I'm like, I really want to do this. And I said, I will call you uh, if I get done in time. And I'm like, fuck, that was really goddamn selfish of me. I'm not enough as a, as a husband. And then when I that got home. That was more of like a daddy thing. Yeah. What, husband because I felt the vibration. I'm like, shoot, I should never have asked you I to be there because I didn't want Terrible. Terrible. I felt so fucking terrible. And when I got home, I had to make the decision. I go, shit, uh, I got to go to the gym. I'm like, do I ride out to Sebastopol, which is, uh, you know, a 20 minute drive or ride by the time I got to the park? Do I change out of my leathers or just go the way I am? And if so, well, shit, we got a podcast tonight. Uh, I'm like, I'll never go to the gym. I got to go to the fucking gym. I'm like, I made a bad choice. I should not have gone out and rode, but I did it anyway. I'm going to go upstairs and get changed. And you know what fucking happened? I went upstairs. I was so burned out from the ride that I laid down on the bed and plugged in my phone. I'm like, I got to have it charged for five minutes because I got like 15%. I passed out for another 15 or 20 minutes. I was so exhausted and I fucking kicked myself out of bed. I'm like, shit, I got to go to the gym. I made food. I made my. Uh, I, I made all my shake stuff. I I got out the door, hopped back on the bike, went over to the gym. I had the shittiest workout. Called it early. As soon as you said, "Hey, I'm coming home from the park," I'm like, "Fuck!" You know what? I had to spend time with my daughter. So I come home, all set to like play with me. <laughs> and then I burn my leg on the fucking <laughs> exhaust, and I'm sitting laid up on the couch. I'm like, I can't even spend time with my daughter. I'm not enough as a dad and a husband today. That's that's where I feel like I'm lacking. So that's how it affects me. And and just so great you know, example. Today is a that example. is why that is why God gave me a two parents, because at the park we were fine. Like I make sure that child knows how hard you work when you're not with us on the weekend. I make sure that that child adores you and esteems what you are doing in this office or on that bike. She understands that she understands mama needs to meditate. 
She and, gets that, yeah. and she understands daddy needs his bike time. And you take you took her for a ride. Oh my goodness. I did. Today feels like the longest day on the face of this planet, doesn't it? Yeah. It's crazy. Like today well, was and a I very spent a long, long time with her in uh at breakfast. I made breakfast, sat down with her, ate breakfast yeah. with you guys. But of course it's never enough because we are high achievers. And so those of us that are out here achieving massive things, the E factor is even more of a deal for us. Um, yeah, we better get into this content. So the very first I know, I'm thing, like looking at a gun. We <laughs> I'm like, cover. whoa. Um, but the, then, this but is then really also, important, though, because... but then also, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, you first. No, here, let me just overpower. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> thank you for letting me over. Thank you, thank you, sir. No, I'm not overpowering. Thank you for granting me the ability to overpower. Um, so another thing is like, if you don't hit your certain numbers that you have in your head because you set these insane goals for yourself, which oh, like me. I'm all over those because I do the same thing as an entrepreneur. We set unreasonable goals for ourselves. And when we don't meet them, not enough. And yeah. we have to pull ourselves back very quickly. Um, and we are getting better and better at pulling ourselves back after setting that high goal and failing. Because guess what, you guys? We've talked about this before. Failure is what happens on the road to success. Many so, times. Many a times. If you if you succeed without failing, I don't truly believe that you succeeded. There's no such thing as a success without Cause, failures. Because what's going to no happen if you're, if you're that person that nails it the first time, there's no failures along the way. You got a long way to fall because it's going to happen. I mean, you're going to you're going to hit something. You're going to trip up something. I mean, let's think about all those people that have won the lottery. Ninety nine percent of them lose all the money. They're back where they started because they don't know how to spend it or they, they spend it all at once. They're not to save it um, like yo-yo dieters, people that just lose, you know, 50 pounds in you know, two months because they starve themselves. Well, guess what? They rebound ninety nine percent of the time. If you try and you fail, you try something, it doesn't work, you try again, you try again, what happens when you fail? You just keep fucking trying until something works and you got, f failure isn't failure, it's experience, it's wisdom, that's what it boils down to. And the very first thing that we want to talk to you guys about this E factor is like, is your not enoughness issue even yours or is it someone else's? Because oh, when you say someone else's, what do you mean? What I mean by that is... Is that something that somebody else put on you? Most of the time it happens in the alpha brainwave state between the ages of zero and seven where a big Rem brother called you a fatty pants. Remind us what the alpha brainwave state is. The alpha brainwave state is a very, very suggestible state that your brain operates in solely for it's, the first five to seven years of your the, life. It's the highest state of learning, correct? It's, it is, well, I mean, theta would be, but alpha is the highest waking state. So theta is that deep dream state. And, okay. you know, when I grow up and I become a monk, I will for sure be able to operate awake in the theta state. But in the alpha brainwave state, that's where I go when I meditate and I tell you I go to different universes and I'm like not here. I have no concept of time or space or anything. And I'm able to detoxify in that meditative state. That's the alpha brainwave state. It's also the same exact state um, where you're driving and it's like hypnogogic, like where you're driving and you don't even realize that there was even like time went by. And suddenly you're like, oh, I'm in the next town. And it's 90 minutes later. That's alpha? I thought that was theta. I, cause I don't know. I'm okay, just so like, theta is the deep, deep brainwave, like where you're in rims or uh, like where you're experiencing like your dream states, like you're actually asleep. Got it. Okay, so alpha is the basically the awake learning suggestible phase. So like kids how? Are in it okay, can I hit on something real hard, real, real, real quick? Yeah. This is the state of mind that every single person experiences. <sighs> in the last few waking moments of their day before they fall asleep. Ooh. That is why in Revolution, we have this neurohacking audio playing during the most suggestible state. Many of you will fall asleep, totally fine you guys. You will still get shredded because your subconscious mind is awake. And even if you enter into theta sleep, your subconscious mind is still listening and processing and programming. But in the first seven years of our lives, first five to seven years, the gap is closing a little bit with all the television and the media. But in the first one or zero to seven years, you're in this alpha brainwave state and you're able to pick up on things that people say, but actually attach them to who you are. Well, you, so if you're you not have always older, in the alpha brainwave state. You spend more time in it than, than, than I you. believe you are solely operating in the alpha. I could be wrong. But from what I understand, you are solely operating in the alpha brainwave state for the first five to seven years of your life. Wow. With the capacity to learn. 
like I hypnotize my daughter. I'm so sorry. Like all the time. She's in a suggestible state and she's very ornery and she's very driven and she's very type A. But I see her in this suggestible state and I, I wait until she's falling asleep and I say, mommy sees your excellence. I see your inner person and it's delicious. You are a beautiful creature made to do beautiful, powerful things. Oh, uh oh, here come the tears. <laughs> you, Waterworks. You've got them Waterworks. Too. You've got them too. Nah. Well, because I go in when she's sleeping and I whisper sweet nothings into her ear like that. But oh my she must gosh, be in... you do? Oh, yeah, all the time. I didn't know that. That's yeah, so but She's cute. probably in theta state or delta state by then. So it just goes in one ear, not the other. Actually, <laughs> or it affects her brain. <laughs> actually, it doesn't. Because last night, keep in mind, you were listening to that. I don't know, something oh, on Hulu, man. and I, it was so, a part of your dream. Yeah, I fell asleep last night listening. I was watching the new South Park episode, and I literally fell asleep 15 minutes into it, and it must have kept auto-playing. 3.45 in the morning, I woke up like in a sweat, had a terrible dream, and there was some theme song playing, and I realized, like this this crazy song in my dream, and I realized, oh, it's in my earbuds. I'm like, I need to take this shit off. I'm like, what's going on? Anyway, it's total total sidetrack. So the point is that the not enoughness factor. Not really, though, because your subconscious factor, mind is never asleep. This the not enoughness factor may not be your own. Are you so? You, are you suggesting that possibly it's something you picked up in this alpha brainwave state when you were a young child, or something that it, you it, grabbed a hold of throughout the the course of your life, and you're attaching it to yourself? So your brother said, "Stupid fatty," but what he really means is. I'm so jealous that you are the the favorite kid and I feel bad about myself. So I'm going to demolish your self-confidence so that I feel better. Or the way that a, a five-year-old might say it is, I don't feel good about me, so I'm going to hurt you. What was said to you by a sibling? What was said to you by a family member, by a parent? So many of you have come from abusive homes. It rips my heart hard out but i've seen what you can become so go into your subconscious mind take some freaking time to be alone with yourself i know it's scary sometimes but open up that mind and say who's not enoughness factor was put into my heart throughout the course of my life well and you can pull that right out you know where i get a lot of not enoughness fucking social media trolls <laughs> there you go like, uh, to be honest Someone this is else one of those things I got to And so, you know, one of the things I really try hard to do is control the dialogue on social media where we go in there and if there's some negative shit being said where people are literally trolling, we just delete the shit. But if it's me doing it, a lot of times I try to smoke people out and go, okay, are they worth talking to? And I shouldn't take this much time on stuff, but sometimes I do. Something just struck a chord. Like today, this uh, some guy wrote something to the effect of, uh, yeah, nice job, douchebag, on blah, 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 steroids, and you freaking, you know, way to just blah, 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 on a, on a motivational video. I'm like, dude, this guy missed the whole fucking point. And I started to feel that not enoughness. Like, what am I doing wrong? Why did this guy, why couldn't he see? Did I did I make the video wrong? Did why, why would somebody do that? It must be me. And I let that in for about 15 to 20 seconds. And that is all it freaking takes to create. And so what did I do? I clicked on his profile. I wanted to see what he did. And I started going down. I'm like, well, you're obviously not into fitness by the way your profile looks. I can tell. I mean, maybe you are. And I'm not judging a book by its cover. But I'm starting to pick up the story from his Facebook page or his Facebook profile, seeing what he's into. And I'm going, you reshare a ton of posts about politics, anger, aggression. You have pictures of things that you do which i think he like does bathroom remodels so he's proud of that and then the one that got me bathroom remodel bathroom remodels oh but the one that got me i was imagining him like posing because i was gonna like, i was gonna say something back and it's i, I get, have that moment where i decide do i give him the smart ass remark where i make him feel like hey that was a dumb comment i put there and i usually don't just go hey dickhead it's usually like hey man uh, yeah wait great great job when there's 99 percent positive comments on you you threw a negative one on there i think you might have missed the point maybe rewatch it again that's my that's my form of or maybe there's a meme that's being yeah. silly like we'll oh who out there. pissed in your cheerios something today. like that just to keep you know? the, the dialogue positive but then yeah. the one that got me is i saw him with a picture with his little girl about me his age mm. and i just said you know what I'm not wasting any more time on this. He's a dad. Something's on his mind. I'm just going to delete the comment. But so how many times have you reached out to them and completely t 
transformed their Amazing. lives and Amazing. got to the heart of the issue. And that's that's what this is about. When people project negativity on you, it has nothing to do with you, you guys. It has everything to do with them. If there's something that you can learn from, awesome. But if it's somebody else's not enoughness factor, be aware that it's got nothing to do with you. Yeah, you need to wear like a bulletproof negativity vest. I don't know what you'd call that. <laughs> no such thing. What's uh, Kevlar? You need a Kevlar negativity vest. Oh, <laughs> yeah. It just bounces off of you. You got to let that that bounce off. And then there's one more thing. It's maybe a label that you've put on yourself. Fat, stupid, boring. Nobody wants to listen to me. If there's a label that you've put on yourself, it needs to be peeled away so that you can step into a new belief about yourself. And we're going to talk about that in a little bit. You know, is this similar to one of those? Well, let's just take an example. So say I'm random person A and I'm a little overweight. Just I'm just average, you know? I'm average and I've done a bunch of stuff in the gym. I haven't seen any results. I work my ass off in the gym every time I'm there. I mean, I'm there. I'm there five days a week, but I'm not seeing results. And I go, well, shit, I guess I was just born this way. I guess I just have a slow metabolism. Maybe not. I guess maybe it's I have a slow metabolism. That's what my, that's I have what my dad hor- told me. I have a hormonal issue. You guys, I spent $500 cash when we were not doing so well financially to see if I had some hormonal issues. Why was I so fat? Why was I so depressed? Why was I so- That was actually on my suggestion though. Yeah, Gabe actually, he's like, get everything checked because I could not lose weight. I had her go down. I said, when you feel this way emotionally, I said, go down that same day, get a blood test so they can see what's going on with your, your hormones and everything turned out to be normal. And totally I was like, normal. no, I just want something to be wrong so I know what to fix. <laughs> <laughs> the point is that the shit's all in our head is really what we're getting down to. And and the one other thing is, was there an experience that defined you in the past? It could be something when you were a kid. Um, it could be something when you were a young adult. But did you have an experience that defined you? Because that can be cut off too. Because it could be contributing to your not enoughness. When factor. you say defined you, are you talking about uh, what created this not enoughness factor? Is there a specific moment? Is that what you're looking for? Like a specific moment where? Oh yeah. Some kid said to you, you know, hey, fat fuck, you know, you're you're not going to be on the basketball team because you're just a fat kid or something like that. And and we're just going to stop. This defining moment. You know? We're just going to stop calling it the not enoughness factor and break it down and just call it the E factor. That's why sure. I made it shorter and coined a term because everybody knows what we're talking about. So when it comes to the E factor, I'm going to tell you what created my E factor that held me back for most of my adult life. Oh, wait, Priscilla. Hmm. I think it would be really helpful if you would tell us what created your E factor that held you back for most of your adult life. Okay, let me go ahead and do that. (laughs) So something really huge that happened to me, I mean, there were a lot of really defining factors that I've gone back and realized um, in, in the development of this E factor. But when I was in the first grade, we were all broken up into learning groups. They were the lions and the tigers and the bears. Oh my, well, I was a lion and that's awesome, right? Who doesn't want to be a lion? Until I realized that we were the dumb kids. And I was like, what? No. Wait, the lion group was the. They gave us an awesome name. Don't read so good. Exactly. (laughs) Or actually, the school for children that don't read. Don't read. No, like not even. Like, it's not that they don't read good. It's like, they just don't. They ain't having it. Like, and I'm looking. So you were the the slow readers. I'm looking around. I'm looking around. Well, actually, I learned. Later, and this this has to do with the breaking free of the E factor in this direction. Because you guys, imagine E factor written on a chalkboard with a big circle around it. And then over to the right, I want you to think of a circumstance that happened that made you feel stupid the way that I felt stupid. Then I want you to think of a circumstance that was like what Gabe explained over on the left side. Not a good parent. Another one, fat. You know, we've got all of these little life circumstances, all these labels, and they're all pointing to E-Factor. I had about a thousand of those in junior high that defined me. Yes. Like literally, I remember very specifically a couple of things. And one of, I know you want to tell your story. No, please. Did you tell yours? Did I miss that? Um, well, yeah, I was, you, I was gonna give a ha- I was going to give a happy ending. Oh, but that's well, go okay. ahead, give your happy ending. So the happy ending is realizing that I wasn't stupid. I just didn't learn like the other children. And so for me, three years ago, I learned to learn, and I became 
a person that I'm really proud of. So in your mid to late 30s, you actually admit your mid 30s. I was, well. So early 30s, you learned how to learn, basically. Basically, like when I was, yeah, when I was, when and I was 30, uh, I, I learned Imagine learn. this. Imagine this. 30 kids in a classroom sitting militantly with one instructor telling you exactly what to do, when to do it. Extensive hours of sitting there when your body is growing and you're fidgety and you have all this energy and you're supposed to be out there. But it's not even that. The other kids were doing fine, but I was born for something more. I was born to be an entrepreneur. I was born to do powerful things that those children were not designed to do. This was in my DNA. You're like the black swan. Dude, it was, it was so awful because I tried so hard my entire school career to fit into their boxes. And I was a circle, and a circle doesn't fit inside a square. Hey, they just you, don't. You know who else was like this? Einstein was like this. Oh, yeah. He had Einstein. a letter written from his teacher when he was very young. I don't remember what age it was, but it basically to his parents that said, uh, your child can no longer go to the school because he's dumb. Is, is the short, very short paraphrased letter. Well, he couldn't even speak fluently until he was nine. So if you are running a little behind or you. And he was hyperactive running, like me. Yeah, exactly. So just think. Oh, Einstein. my gosh. I think we have the same birthday, too. You and Einstein? I think we might. All right. And somebody Shirley do Temple. a Google search to see I know, when Einstein somebody... was born. I'm I'm April 23rd, and you may send me not chocolate, but f I like flowers and chocolate. I like um, shirts with my husband's face on it. I'll eat the chocolate. I like ponies. Send the chocolate. <laughs> You're Specific brownies. Such a Specific jerk. Brownies. Well, okay. Now let's talk about where mine came from. I because I like to talk about me. Okay, you guys can laugh. That's okay. <laughs> Courtesy laugh. Howard would have laughed if Howard had been here. Thanks, Howie. Howard had thrown something at you. Fuck you, Howie. Now, oh, that's my new thing. Because we're doing this thing to see who can get the most shredded by December. Because I'm going to do this photo shoot, shoot for the magazine cover. And so he's challenging me. And then I saw him on Snapchat the other night. He was out at the bar just throwing down a couple. He's having a good time. He's living his life. But that's what I do, too. But I have said no alcohol, no nothing until December. And I was like, oh, Howie, wait. You, and I <laughs> fired back at him on Snapchat. I'm like, oh, wait, you're out drinking. And you just smashed me on Snapchat earlier saying that you were going to beat me in the shredding contest. I'm like, we got we got three and a half months till December, man. I'm like, it, it's going to happen. And I'm going to kick your fucking ass. So anyway. You can kick his butt. Just do revolution. My, my use all the things. tools. You'll smoke them. My little things in junior high. I remember I, I wanted to wear my hat backwards because I saw some kids that I looked up to doing it. I remember one day I like I turned my hat around backwards. I was walking through the halls and this fucking kid, his name was Dave. I'm not going to use his last name because he might be listening Dave to this. Dave the butthead. I'm just going to call him. Dave the mini pants. Call him, yeah, we'll call him whatever. But his name okay, was Dave. Okay, his name wasn't Dave. From across Dave, not the Dave. halls, he's like. Oh, Gabe, you think you're a fucking gangster now? You fucking gangster, Gabe? And I looked at him like, no, oh, dude. I'm like, I just want to wear my fucking hat however I want to wear it. He's like, oh, okay, whatever, gangster. Just that kind of shit where I'm like, fuck, I can't even wear my hat backwards. And then I remember I was dating this girl. Her name was Francesca. And I don't want to talk poorly about anybody ever. Uh, so I won't. I'll just totally skip over that. Um <laughs> She was I know. super sweet. Dude, I made him go back. I'm all dude. Dude. I made bro, him go bro. I made him go back and get in touch with Francine, all of his exes you, and apologize for everything that he's ever done and I reconnect did. relationship Wait, wise. No. When have I gone back and apologized to? I never did anything wrong. I'm like, get on the phone I'm with not, Carrie. I'm like, make things right. I didn't I didn't get Don't on the phone. Don't you remember when we first Dude, yes, you did. I did. You hit your head for a living. And then I became her I personal trainer and nutritionist, and I helped her lose 40 pounds, and, and it got her pregnant. Oh. Well, I didn't With get her, her third child that she named, the name that you guys were going to name your first child if you ever had a child. I don't How do you forget this. these things? I hit my fucking head a lot in wrestling. I really do. Did, oh, my gosh. Did. Did. Past tense. I don't hit my head much anymore. Only maybe you've just forgot that you don't still oh hit your head. Oh my gosh. Okay. I hope you don't so hit your apparently head. I've, so I've confusing. made some apologies in my it's life. It's <laughs> really confusing. <laughs> but well, there was you that. made amends. I, I remember this, this other time like I saw her walking down the hallway with her friends and I was like, oh, I'm just going to run up and say hi. I run up. I ran up behind her. I like jumped, tapped her on the on the shoulder. Like, you know, I'm, dude, I'm in seventh grade, you know. I'm still a kid. I'm all of, what, 12 years old? I jumped, tapped her on the shoulder and it scared her. 
and it like freaked her out and she was like ah, ah. and then it was like what the fuck are you doing dude you fucking Aww. hurt this girl i'm like bro i just touched her like i'm like okay so i can't i can't do anything right is really where Fran, it came from. you t-boned me bro francine you t-boned me bro all right That's so dad reference th- what do you do when the e factor comes creeping like an evil little creeper. Like when you start to get these E factor feelings, like you're like, I. You start going down the rabbit hole, basically. Dun, dun, dun. I don't really have a song for that, but it should be something suspenseful. Well, a lot so of this. So, what the heck do you do? Okay, go ahead, please. What do you do? Okay. So, first of all, I used to be like, oh, why am I such a terrible mother? And then I'd say, uh, why am I so terrible for thinking that I'm terrible? And it just like makes it amplify. So when these feelings come in, hey, don't be a hater. Like judge not. Just observe the thought as neutral. Just experiencing, experience yourself having this thought. And then read between the lines. What do these words really mean? The, the words that you're saying inside your head? Exactly. This so, so e-factor say, shit? So let's take, for example... Um, you know, when when revolution came out, it was blood, sweat and tears. And it was a year of putting this material together that was my life's passionate work. And it was one failure after another failure after another failure. We launch revolution. And then I sit down to just bask in it. And I realize like 16,000 quirks that need to be fixed. Is it quirk? Quark? Quark. That's, Quark. that's it. Quark. Okay. And, and see, oh, I don't know the word. Quark is a subatomic particle. And I just felt, oh, really? Is it? Okay. There were yeah. not subatomic particles it's in revolution that I know and a of. And has an upspin and a downspin. We know stuff, you guys. Well, I know shit. Well, you know, you actually know probably more I'm than actually, I do know about something. I'm actually You're like, fucking smart now. <laughs> I'm borderline brilliant. You, and and I like barely. PhD. But see, when he made fun of me just now, I had a flash of Aoife. I'm just being straight up with you guys because it's a trigger for me. Well, and I wasn't meaning to in any way, shape or form say that you weren't smart. No, I was but to I'm put glad. I over as a joke. And but I'm I realized, glad that oh, happened. Shit, I said that. Because that's how it happens. I am a powerful woman. You see what I did? I swooped in there and reaffirmed her, though. Right. But once Super fast. once something is said, it doesn't matter because, as you guys could hear, Gabe said nothing rude about me. But I took it personally because I have a little soft spot there. So what do you do when it creeps area. in? What do you do when it creeps in? And and we are talking about that. Like, we're, we're going to talk about how to cut it off. Um, I was going to talk about the whole revolution thing. But basically, I got to a point where I saw the road ahead of me. And I was like, oh my gosh, there's so much ahead that I need to accomplish. But then there's, then there's that clarifying statement. It's not that I am not accomplishing. It's that I'm in love with the fact that I am ambitious to do more in my life and that I see the purpose of what I've been called to, what I'm capable of. So this and is then something- you proceed with purpose. So this is something you tell yourself. So when the E factor creeps in, you, you have tell a positive yourself, affirmation. What do you? What do you? you so you positively affirm your, yourself that you're doing the right thing. So I'm like, I'm so far away from finishing this, but really, what it is, you guys, is we're not. We're seeing ourselves in in an ego state. You know, in in your everyday waking state. Compared to where you know in your gut you are going to do, like your inner self and God is calling you to a higher place. And you can see it with your heart, but you can't hold it in your hand. And it's that chasm between holding it in your hand and 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 seeing it. It's it's that imbalance that we feel. So basically you were feeling like you were not enough. You your E factor creeped in because and you, I can't you launched do it. you launched your program. And there were so many little tiny things that need to be done. You just thought, I've failed. Or it'll never be, the, the program will never be enough, which means that I will never be enough. Like I'm not smart That's, enough to figure out this program to fix this thing. You know, all, all the old crap creeps in. I'm too fat okay. to be doing this. You know, and and, so and it's total garbage. When that happened, you said to yourself, a positive affirmation inside your head. You You woke up from this, E factor down the rabbit hole shit. You go, oh, wait, no, this isn't right. This isn't true. You positively affirm yourself. I am so in love with the fact that I have ambition to be more and I know that I'm going to be more. And so that was my little 
mantra so that I it, adopted and I was able to proceed with purpose. So then in essence, basically somebody just needs to positively affirm themselves in their head or maybe even say out loud. Cause this is, this is something that I do. Cause I, you'll, you'll never hear me say this cause I'm in the office by myself, but I'm just like, nah, fuck this shit. Like I'll, I'll talk to myself all the time in the office. <laughs> I'm, I'm a head case, man. I'll talk to myself cause I'll think that shit. I'm like, no, no, what the fuck? No, no, absolutely not. And that's me saying, no, this is not the way it is. But if you guys are struggling with this E-factor and it's creeping in, positively affirm yourself out loud. Who the fuck cares who's around you? I mean, obviously, if you're in a cubicle with you know four people around you, you may not want to say, like, I'm a goddamn superhero and I'm going to conquer the world because you may get drug out in a fucking straitjacket. But you can take a step outside. You can say it under your breath. You can say it to yourself. You can go sit in your car and you can say whatever it is you need to do. I know I've got this. I'm on the right track. This is my goal. Repeat your why to yourself. We've talked about the why so many times. Why are you doing this? Because I'm going to change lives. And you can find a positive way to think about the negative circumstance. And the next part is to understand you are not a victim of circumstance. You're in control when you choose where to direct your energy. This is where you become infinitely powerful. So I've got this little kind of visual for you guys to think of. I want you to think of a screensaver, kind of like the old style screensaver, like you walk away to go get a cup of coffee and like the screensaver pops up and it's like and all, all these lines like, are going back and forth. Bing, totally, bing. totally. So what what causes a screensaver to pop up when the computer's at idle? Boom. And idle never happens when you're busy making an impact in this world. Do you remember in the very beginning of this podcast where Gabe was talking about he's too busy to think about his not enoughness? He thinks of his not enoughness at the end of the night when he's laying in bed and the anxiety comes and we're alone together and he starts to think about these things. But when he's busy during the day, he is making such an impact and he is so hungry and he is so driven. He doesn't have that downtime in his thought life. I'm guessing you probably have it when you go downstairs to make a cup of coffee or you go to the bathroom to take a pee. You probably, or what? Or a poop. And there's a lot of time. There's a lot of, there's a lot of fun time time. that goes on there. I don't know. Most of my data plan gets used while I'm going poop. But keep in mind when his mind is busy, (laughs) he's too busy to have the screensaver pop up. So when it pops up, call a spade a spade and recognize that it is the screensaver. And go back to step one. Clarify the affirming statement that you have for yourself. What is What do these emotions really mean? There's always a positive way to swing it. And the next part is to, how do you wake up a computer? You wiggle the mouse or you tap the keyboard. All right. And there's a lot of different keys. That's what we're going to talk about next. There are so many keys. These are the ones that we recommend. You cut off the thought. Key number one. You chop it off. You're like, I'm not listening to you. You Thank you anyways. No, so thank you. This is like your F1 key. Exactly. I like Oh, that. no. This is the escape key. Like, ooh. See you later. I'm out. Oh, ooh. Yeah. This, yeah. It's the escape key. It's the, it's the save all. Nope, nope. Don't want to do that. Escape, escape, escape. Yep. Escape. Ooh, I like that. That's okay. The so key. the next one is identify the thought that is occurring. So when you call it out, do you remember like the monster under the bed? You're like terrified as a kid. And then finally one day you get the courage to look under the bed and the monster's not there. Actually, that happened to me when I watched the very first Alien movie, <laughs> and the xenomorph scared the shit out of me. I was 13 years old. We were living in Sebastopol, and my mom watched it with me because my dad was too tired to watch it, and uh, I was scared shitless to go to the bathroom afterwards, and the bathroom was six feet. You know where the TV used to be in my parents' house. It was six feet from there. It's like the first door on the left in the hallway. I could not take a pee. I asked my mom to stand by the door for me. And then every night, and as soon as it got she dark, I was angel. so scared the fucking xenomorph was going to come out, and with this little little mini mouth, you know, open the big mouth, little mini mouth comes out and just eats my freaking heart out. That's what I was scared of. What were we talking about before this? About like calling it out and being like, "There's a monster under the bed." No, oh, there's not a monster under the bed. That was my monster under the bed. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so what I had to do, I, this is this is what happened. One day I had to face that fear. I had I was tired of it. I was so scared. One day I went so bad it must have been like 3 a.m i remember i was just this kid just shivering in my bed i had the covers pulled over my head i was so scared and you know when you like <laughs> i don't know if you ever did this but you put the sheet 
just over your mouth so only your mouth sticks out <laughs> so you have fresh air to breathe oh, or totally. else you're just breathing in co2 underneath the the blanket and you're getting like super, yourself yeah well you're basically mm-hmm. getting ready to pass out and i'm scared i can't move i'm paralyzed by fear i had a lot of nightmares when i was a kid and i would wake up screw- i had night terrors even as a teenager so i was paralyzed by fear and one fucking day i just said fuck this there's nothing there gabe there's nothing there there's nothing there this is all in my head and I just threw the covers back and I looked around, I sat up in bed and looked around and a little nightlight because I was a puss. I had a nightlight and I looked around. There was nothing there. And I stood up and I went to the door and I remember I like peered down the hallway one way, peered down the hallway the other. I'm like, there's nothing there. There's nothing there. And I stood up, put my shoulders back and I walked straight to the bathroom. I was petrified, but I said, there's nothing there. There's nothing there. There's nothing there. Like, not moving my mouth as I'm talking. My teeth are clenched. Turned the light on the bathroom, pissed, flushed the toilet, turned the light off, and instead of running back like a chicken shit, I continued with that, and I said, there's nothing there. And the crazy part is, like, the cold part, I'm, and I can totally remember this. When you open the door from my parents' bathroom, the hallway turns to the left. Like, you go left, you go to all the bedrooms. You go right, you go to the living room, the family room, the kitchen, and the front door. And as a kid, the, to the right, like there's no safety there because my parents are to the left. My brother's to the left. There's nothing to the right. At them, my dog was to the left. So I'm exposed. My Yosha, rest in peace. My Yosha, my giant Japanese Akita. She was beautiful. But all my fear is to the right. And I had to turn my back to my fear and expose my back to my fear. Ooh, that's always the creepiest. Calmly to my bedroom to, to conquer it. I knew I had to walk and I couldn't run. Or I would never conquer the fear. And from that night on, I was never afraid that the fucking alien xenomorph, the big black thing with little choppers, was going to get me. See, I tried to do that all the time. And my I would like get to the bathroom and then I would like start to get ready to go to the bathroom. My brother would like jump out of this shower and like punch me in the face. I'm like, uh, no, he's it's dick. real. I didn't have an older brother that would do that. But the point is, face your fear. Well, and identify that the thoughts occurring. Say, I'm afraid of, what's his name? Oh, it's, a, it's called a xenomorph. Xenomorph. So, so you identify the thought, xenomorph. And then you cut it off by stating the affirmation from one. Xenomorph doesn't exist. And I'm going to prove it by walking into the other room with courage. And then you immediately change your state or physiology. You stand up out of your bed. You walk to the bathroom calmly with your shoulders back. You walk with your back towards your fear. Now, when we talk about changing your state, we're talking about your vibrational state. So typically- I'm talking about the physiological state. I mean, yes, you're changing your vibrational state. Well, you're trying to change your vibrational state by changing your physiology. Exactly. Okay, so just for people that haven't listened to the previous podcast, we've covered this before, but just a quick recap. Changing your physiology. So the rate of your heart rate, your uh, the body temperature, your posture, skin cadence, your posture, anything that's going to change. What do you mean your, by skin cadence? Uh, the temperature of your your skin, but uh, it, it's it's a direct reflection of the the temperature of your your body. So anything that's going to change your current physiology will change your vibrational state, and whatever you associate with it at that time is going to become basically ingrained in your head. It'll be programmed into your head breath is another really great way to change your state both um physiologically and vibrationally as well um and you're gonna need different things in in different times like gabe he was scared when he was a kid and he needed to walk with his shoulders back with courage um sometimes if you're feeling angry if you're like this isn't working you need to go sprint down the street or jump up and down as many times as you can sometimes it you're if you're feeling overwhelmed with anxiety because of the e factor and that's when you take a big breath hold it as long as you can exhale slowly and then the next part is create a purposeful thought with positive input and pd is the way that we do that and put PD something in personal development is what we we call that. And so that's. So replace the space. That's kind of cute because yeah. it rhymes. Yeah. But I like replace that. the space. Whatever space the what is that guy? Valcor? The Xenomorph. Xenomorph. Okay, so wait. Falcor is the luck dragon from the oh, never no, story. This... Totally different. Stop. He was a little weird looking and a little, little, not, not freaky, but just kind of strange looking. He was a very big white luck dragon that Atreyu wrote on. 
And he saved that doesn't sound he scary saved his world and our world in the never ending story. That doesn't epic, sound scary. Epic saga that no. every kid needs to watch. That doesn't sound scary. I'm a luck dragon. Remember that? Oh, that's not scary. No, no. A xenomorph, however, is an all black, hard shelled alien that is kind of humanoid with giant claws. Z-morph. Xenomorph. Xenomorph. X E N O. Xenomorph. Xenomorph. Uh, it has two mouths. So it's got a big one, and then it's got a little one that comes out, and it eats you and chomps you. Oh. If you. Slice it open for any reason, it bleeds acid, so you die that way. And it's got a tail that stabs you. Totally different than Elect Dragon. Completely different than fucking Falcor. Um, that sounds like exactly what I would want please, to fill my brain with. Please, please get your sci-fi right. Wow, I really need to brush up on my sci-fi. Yes. Mm, no. Okay, so think of something <laughs> different than Too Xenomorph. Epic Xenomorph? Movie. Xenomorph. 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 Think of something different than Xenomorph by than putting- a Xenomorph. A uh, xenomorph. It's not like his name is xenomorph. Or we don't even know if it's a he or a she. Okay. It's just the xenomorph. Okay. This, or this a xenomorph. mouthy, toothy, eyeball thing, but black thing. It, don't think about that. Instead, think about something that empowers you to believe in your ability to achieve. Something I love to do with personal development is listening to and reading other people's success stories. So if I'm looking to succeed in a pers- in a particular direction, I look for somebody else who's already succeeded in that direction. I get fueled and motivated and I'm like, I can do it too. I believe I can fly. Because you got to see someone else that can fly. Okay, anyways. Well, and one way to do that, so a lot of people that are listening have standard jobs. So they go to work, they work for nine, 10 hours a day, they commute home. They probably work in an office or they might be swinging a hammer. If, if some of this shit hits home with you guys and you're feeling like this negativity creeps in, dude, grab your phone, Plug in one earbud if you're at the office. That way you can still hear other shit. So like if you know you got to hear the phone ring or your boss is talking to you or something. Plug in one earbud and then pick a YouTube video that's positive like a Tony Robbins thing or a Body Spartan motivational video possibly. And just let it play. Because if you've changed your physiology, if, by, if you've changed your state by changing your physiology. So let's say you got up, you took a five minute break, you went for a quick walk. And you jumped up and down 10 times, you put your hands in the air, you've changed your state. Now you're ready to re-imprint what's going on. So put something positive in your mind. So that's a quick and easy way. Grab your phone, put on YouTube, get YouTube Red for and if fuck's you're, sake. It's if $9 you're at a the... month. YouTube Red is $9 a month. You can turn your phone off and the shit will still play. It's But awesome. sometimes if you're if you're needing your, your conscious mind, because this is good for when you're not using your conscious mind, your empty brain space. But if you're sitting at the desk and you absolutely need to like focus on what you're doing and there's other people in cubicles and there's negativity and all this stuff, you can stand up, you can walk to go get coffee, you can walk to the bathroom, you can slap. Like this. Every single inch of your body. This is a technique. You I have, bet that looked sounded really great on a podcast. I was just going to say, on a podcast, that probably sounds like fapping, but I'm just saying. Not quite sure what that means, but <laughs> this is a technique that I learned from the Bryn and Burchard Immersion wrist, by the way. Seminar. And the, in his immersion seminar, he showed us that you can change your state by increasing your chi by slapping every single part of your body. Maybe look it up. Um, right, so wait, Brandon Richard. how hard do you slap your body? So that you freaking feel it. It it moves your your blood flow, your lymphatic flow. And so you're going, you're slapping like up the front of your arm, up the back bottoms of your arm imagine? on each side. So it wait, is power, don't I, knock it until I'm you try it. I'm not knocking it. it. I'm just powerful. saying if you're in an office with like 30 people. I just told them to go do this in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Like, oh my gosh. Okay, maybe you're walking, don't do the slapping You're walking technique. down the aisle full of cubicles and you're just like, oh gosh. No, I, your arm, no, I told them to go get a cup of coffee. No, I told them to go get a cup of coffee and then go, go the do bathroom. this in the bathroom and do the slapping like, technique. You're in the bathroom and all of a sudden everybody outside just hears this smack, smack. Yeah, they hear that. Oh I'm sure that's going to go over I'm super dying well. Right now. So maybe what you should do instead is just step outside for a moment. Grab that cup of coffee. But to change step your physiology, outside and then slap yourself. Oh gosh! <laughs> or you can do some jumping up and down. Not but then when you get with back, slap yourself. <laughs> so I still don't know what that means. So when you get back to your desk, if you need to use your brain stave, you can also use binaural beats to increase your concentration and not pick up on gossipy cubicle mates or whatever else that you need to block out. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be an audiobook or something to cause you to grow. Sometimes it just has to be something to cause your brain waves to operate in a different way. And then the next couple of things, um, purposeful meditation. That's a great thing that you can do at the office too. Um, you, you know, can, even five you meditate minutes. Meditate at the office? You can walk outside for five minutes and... Oh, so instead of slapping yourself 
in the bathroom so that your boss thinks <laughs> that you're fapping. We're going to go outside and sit in downward dog. And Are you asleep? No, meditation has nothing to do with <laughs> yoga. Just fucking around. Oh, my gosh. You're so... Can I give these people some value, please? So... <laughs> So One go to thing, your car, but you're you're saying go somewhere. I would peaceful say and quiet. don't go to your car. If it's possible to go to nature where you can take your feet and put them on the earth, it will take away what are you doing? What do you mean? They can't see you, but I can. I was biting my finger. I know, but the way you were looking at me was really Oh, it had nothing to do with that. I was thinking. That didn't uh, well, here, look like well, I was here's what I was doing. I was thinking do I go into uh, uh do I segue into a short off spin on what grounding is because it's so powerful and I think I'm going to so Priscilla said step away get your feet into the earth and you want grounding just... I think we should talk about yeah. it I, and, and I know we're going to run over time a little bit I'm we like talking so fast because you keep on giving me the five minutes five minutes five well, minutes we, but we so try to keep this here. to a short podcast for you guys but there's just so much information that we need to cover there's so much good information grounding is a basic it, it's a scientifically backed technique that the earth contains negative ions, negative electrons. That, and so when you wire up a house, what do we do? We have a ground wire so that nobody gets electrocuted. And where does that ground wire go? It goes into the ground. So it's this big, thick gauge wire that goes deep into the ground so that any excess electrons, electricity, will go to the ground instead of into you. So you don't get shocked when you accidentally stick your finger somewhere you shouldn't and you become positively charged by spending too much time on your phone on the computer maybe your brain feels fuzzy that's how you know that you need to go outside take your shoes off well, and put them on the earth and here's the thing too um our rubber soled shoes that we wear they prevent us from having contact with the earth so what is the number one insulator for electricity anything rubber so it it's preventing us from making contact with good old mother earth there's a documentary that came out a while ago. Do you remember the name of it? It's called The Grounded. The Grounded. Highly recommend you guys look it up. <laughs> That's so funny. You and I like brainwave. Like, how did I know what you were even talking about? Monogi. Uh, Monogi. Monogi. Remember, if you yeah, guys... we have like this very amazing telepathic relationship. And we call it Monogi. It was from a Friends episode, actually, when Joey looked at somebody and it was... Anyway, Monogi. Like, I know what you're thinking. You know what I'm thinking. Yeah. Like, telepathy we, is real. We call it Monogi. Yeah. But this documentary called The Grounded goes into a whole lot of detail. I think it was on Netflix or did we watch it on YouTube? Um, it's on all of them. But so, you can get it for free on YouTube. It's by... Um, yeah, just Chromecast Dr. Mercola. Mercola did it? Mercola was one of the huge funders. For The Grounded? Yeah. Wow, I didn't know that. It was one of his original research projects. Oh, and there's a second one too. Well, let's talk Even about the first awesome one. Even more awesome than the first. Uh, the, and I want to show you guys that this this really works because they did a scientific experiment at the end of the documentary where there was a, a gentleman who had severe um, uh, uh, macular degeneration. So the macula is the center part of the eye that... Um, I actually don't know exactly what it does. <laughs> it, I, I know my, my grandfather has this actually. It's the same thing. So I think it's the, exactly the center of your eye. Like if you were to look out, it's hard to see right in the center. You can see in your peripheral, but you can't see right in the center as the macula starts to basically degenerate. And it's the lack of blood flow to the macula that causes the degeneration. So the blood vessels start to become constricted and eventually die off. What they did is they had this guy sit in a chair in an office, uh, in an optometrist op or ophthalmologist office, sorry, and they put his feet on a pad, bare feet on a pad that was uh, an electrical conductor. They ran a wire outside and they stuck the wire into the ground. So it basically would conduct electricity. Natural. So it was equivalent to him putting his feet on the earth. Yeah, exactly. Barefoot. But if you think about this, it's simple science. You know, if you have a, a metal conductor that runs from the ground, Outside and it goes on a little metal pad and you put your feet on the pad. You're still going to conduct. You're still an electrical conductor. Well, he sat there for a couple of hours. I don't remember exactly how many it was, but they watched and they documented this on the film as his blood vessels began to expand. And there was a noticeable improvement, not just a minor itsy bitsy tiny one that like may or may not. It was statistically accurate improvement so there was no way that it could not have been from what was ha from the grounding his macular degeneration was reversing right before their eyes and this is one case study there were hundreds yeah. and there was another guy that was paralyzed and began to walk after the study and yes. for some people it takes time about that and, but there's a lot of different 
properties. This is like for another podcast, but it is hugely you, powerful. You got to pee. You're just like doing the pee pee dance with mm, your feet. Well, no, because you, you, you gave me the time frame thing. Fuck the time. Let's just, th this is more important. Okay. Because I have like so much more content that I put on here for us, but I like. Well, we'll, we'll keep the, you know, we'll keep it short and sweet from here on out. And you guys know what short and sweet means for us. So <laughs> yeah, we're trying to be short and sweet. Plug in. If this is going to be a two parter for you guys, just pit pause, but, but we're going to keep But going. hey, if you deal with feelings of not enoughness, if you put your feet on the earth, that will help you. Another thing that you can do to ground is take your, what? Well, go, I wanted to make sure that they knew what was acceptable for uh, the surfaces. Oh yeah, so do you want to say it? Dirt, grass, especially anything that is wet. Non-finished concrete, basically. That's a so big the, one that you can find. asphalt will not work. It has to be non-finished concrete. Like a sidewalk will work, but asphalt won't because asphalt has rubber in it. And the and the concrete has to be grounded itself, so it can't be on a wood pallet. Oh, good. Great it's got to be like right to the earth, and wood does not work. Correct. So just just a couple little tips for grounding. So take your freaking feet your feet off. Take your feet off. Take your shoes off. Put them on the earth, and then I like to take my hands and put them in like prayer position. Put them right over the heart, and that helps um, with energy centers and kind of balancing and breathing. People are gonna think you're really weird if they see you, but shoot, let them talk. They're not gonna help you with your emotional state Don't if they're give talkers. Don't fuck what anyone else mm -mm. thinks. And sometimes it just is all about going outside, taking a deep breath until you can't hold it anymore. Breathe in until you can't breathe in anymore and hold it as long as you can possibly hold it and exhale. If you can do that three times, I guarantee you, you will have a complete state change and you will be thinking about things differently than you did five minutes before. You know, our, our buddy, Robert Bergman, the spirit boxer, as we as he's so I aptly named, him. he's so cool. He's one of those guys that is just... Uh, He's so spiritually aligned and he when he does he calls it recentering and he does this thing where he'll he'll put his hands straight up like his fingers are all pointed and then he bends his pointer finger and he goes recenter and he puts his puts his hand right in front of his face and his little his pointer finger. See, I don't like, know. That's so cool. See, that sounds so crazy <laughs> sounds to me. So like I need to spend time ninja. with him or something cuz I awesome. have I feel like those of us that are like um, just in spiritual quandary and spiritual experience, we all kind of have different methods, but it works for us and it works for our tribes. So do what works for you guys. So purposeful meditation. Great. So, and guys, let's just recap really quick. The idea, uh, the, the using the E factor to break through self limitations, what we're talking about. Number one is your E factor. You're not enoughness. Is it yours or is it someone else? And if it's somebody else's try thinking about that moment in time that defined you that possibly defined you so whether it was a kid a parent a friend somebody that maybe said something that created some self-limiting beliefs in yourself and look at that thought and be like hey no thank you yep no thanks so well that's number two what do you do when the e-factor comes creeping in there's a bunch of things don't judge the thought reaffirm yourself with a positive affirmation it's not a negative thought it's just a neutral thought. It's just a thought. Reaffirm yourself with a positive affirmation. Number three, realize that you're in control and choose where you direct your energy. This is where we talked about the screensaver and the uh, what happens when the computer goes idle and what happens when it starts creeping in. You hit the escape key. There's a bunch of other tricks that we showed you. And now, uh, number four, how do you rock your E factor, P? <laughs> like so eat star. like you freaking love yourself. If you eat like crap, you will feel like crap. That's enough on that. Secondly, spend time doing PD on self-love. There's two that we want to recommend to you. Personal development. Number one, if you guys don't know that by now, don't make me spank your bottoms. So the first one is well, PD, mastery like, of... It, it, some people might think of it as like a disease. Or they might think like PE. Spend time doing PD on self... It's like, oh, is that... Is that a triple X thing? Like, Y'all better learn our words. <laughs> Spend time doing PD on self-love. And so one that I'm going through right now, and it's taken me a ridiculously long time to get through it, but it's called The Mastery of Love. It's by Miguel, I guess his last name is Ruiz, R-U-I-Z. Ruiz? Ruiz. Is that? That's. It's you, ruined. 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 Ruiz. Ruined. <laughs> so it's called The Mastery of Love. And the reason that I chose cool this. Whip. <laughs> to do. Cool whip. Oh my God. Say whip. 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 The Mastery <laughs> of Self Love by <laughs> Miguel Ruiz. Okay. We are total Family Guy nerds, by the way. Except for I don't watch Family Guy you anymore, used but to, I remember though. those And days. there was plenty of episodes. We still go back to those jokes. We have those like it's been years. serious inside jokes. Ruined. Dude, I everybody, don't even know. Everybody on the planet knows, knows Cool Whip and Ruined. 
Well, I feel like sometimes we bust out with the jokes expecting that everybody understands. And then we're like, we're super retarded. Uh, I don't even know. Okay. So the reason I chose this book is because when you have the capacity to love yourself, you have a capacity to love your spouse more and your child more and others more. And this is in a book. We are in. Huh? This is in the book. No, I said the reason that I chose to read this book is because... This book, Mastery of Love by Miguel Mastery of Love, Ruiz. yes. Yes. How's so, that novel going? Get a little protagonist and an antagonist? Are you Can done? Do a little ready? Are you done? On the faster the speed of love? Are you finished? Let me come to a nice conclusion. Okay, that's it. I'm going to Starbucks so that everybody knows that I'm a writer. <laughs> I'm going to write on my laptop. All, All right, enough family guy okay. jokes. The so, point is... So Mastery of Love um, is a book that I chose because I wanted to learn to love my family more and the people that I serve more. And the very best place to start is by understanding and loving yourself. So this book creates simple steps to show you how to heal your emotional wounds. And don't act like you don't have emotional wounds. We all freaking have emotional wounds because that is what happens on our road to discovering who we really are. So explain to me this book. So we're talking about some PD suggestions for you guys. Master. So what is this Mastery of Love? Just give me the short and dirty. What is it about? Yeah, so so it works on recovering like our emotional wounds, the things that we've dealt with in our life, and recovering our joy. And and he explains it as a birthright. He also wrote another amazing book called The Four Agreements, and he incorporates those into this book. It's absolutely amazing, you so guys. If you have mastery of love and the four agreements, the four and agreements. It's if a you lot guys of guys like, don't have time to read Priscilla. We always suggest, or Priscilla always suggests audiobook because because your brain absorbs it the same way. Keep in mind, when the screensaver goes on is when you're doing dishes and when you're doing laundry. But if you're combating that by listening to audiobooks and personal development type of things that are causing you to grow, PD. And here's a little PD. insider tip. If you don't think you got time to read, think about what Warren Buffett used to do. I was listening to uh, Eric Thomas, E.T., the other day. And he was telling a story about Warren Buffett. He got to sit down with Warren Buffett. And when you're there with somebody that's a multi-billionaire like Warren Buffett, you don't talk. You just listen. Because now's the time when you start soaking up information. And E.T. asked him, he said, you know, Warren, take me through a typical day. What do you do? Well, this guy, richest guy on the planet, Warren Buffett, says, well, I start the first six hours of my day by reading. E.T. is just like, what? This guy reads for six hours a day? Where does he find time to do business? And so E.T. asks him, he says, what are you reading? He says, well, sometimes I read the 1962 Ford Financial Report. <laughs> and E.T.'s going, what the fuck with this guy? Why? And so he goes, may I ask you, Mr. Buffett, why would you read the 1962 Ford Financial Report? Because they had a great year. And I'm trying to figure out exactly what they did so that I can mimic it with my other companies. He was a genius. I mean, the guy is brilliant. He, would, he, he told E.T. that he bought Coca-Cola, right? Coca-Cola sells these little tiny glasses for like a certain amount of money. Makes millions on them every year. He bought the company and raised the price a penny. A penny! Didn't have to change nothing, didn't relabel it, didn't do nothing. Made millions of dollars because he changed it by a penny. Genius. What does Tony Robbins say? Two millimeters. That's all it takes. That's all it takes. Two millimeters change of everything. change. everything. I'm not saying you guys should go read the 1962 Ford Financial Report for personal development, but I'm saying if Warren Buffett had time to read six hours a day, you can sure as hell make 20 minutes a day to listen to a goddamn audiobook and improve yourself. And so. another another tip that really helps in rocking the E factor is affirming while you look yourself in the eye, in the mirror. You have got to get to a place where you love yourself and you're not judging yourself for what you are not, but you're focused on what's ahead and, and the wholeness of who you truly are. Don't, yeah, I mean, this is big. I, we kind of just brushed over that really quick, but that's big. I look myself in the mirror every fucking day and I look into my own eyes. And the eyes are the window to the soul, as you know very well, Priscilla. We've had some serious meditation sessions where like, 
we've seen into each other's souls. It's crazy. But when you look yourself in the mirror and you're not afraid to look away and you look into that dark pupil and you look beyond the eye, and you look into your own soul, that's the time when you can affirm yourself and be the strongest. And you realize that everything else is a simulation. I mean, you look at yourself in that mirror and you say whatever you like me. I'm the baddest motherfucker on this planet. I'm going to change the fucking world. And, and no one going to stop me. And you may not believe it at first. But if you can look yourself in the eyes in the mirror and just, just say, I love you. You're enough. Every day. If you could do it three times a day, you won't be the same person in three months. And if you can look in the mirror at your blubbering, roll-filled tummy like I did and say, there's a six-pack under there. Or, you know what? You have pretty eyes. And divert your attention away from the things that cause negative momentum. Start to really love yourself. But yeah, you are enough. That's what this is about, the E factor. Mm -hmm. You are enough. So look yourself in the mirror and speak it into existence. We've, we've covered this many times, but when you say stuff out loud, your brain believes it. And there's another thing that you can do that's a really cool technique for the E factor, transmuting power. Sounds really crazy and freaky, but you can take power in one area of your life. Say that you are the most amazing dad ever. Like you're crushing it with your kid, like just adding so much value, so much impact. You can take that PowerPoint of your life and transmute it convert it, exchange it, put it also, like lighting a fire, like taking that awesome fire, lighting another candle, that one stays lit, you've lit another candle in the area of fitness, for example. And you can take that power and use it in the gym. Now the only time that we ever talk about transmutation around you and me is this whole sexual transmutation thing. And that is where like- Where you take your sexual energy and you push it into some other area, which, I got to be honest, I found this to be very, very, very true. Like, if you take your sexual energy and you focus it on the business, I'm not saying like, oh, hey, I'm going to take some sexy pics for all you people out there. And not trying to make your business sexual. Like, it's not like that. It's focusing that energy that you would be, you know, blowing, for lack of a better term, somewhere else. (laughs) I feel like this has to be a podcast in and of itself. It does. I think people will go cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs with a sexual transmutation. Okay, we'll talk about transmutation another time. All I got to say is that it works. And transmuting basically means taking- This is a little bit different. It means taking an energy and applying it and pushing it into another area. So taking your energy and you don't lose that energy. So so here's an affirmation that you can say to yourself, um, just- Using the example that I used, I am an outstanding parent. I am crushing it at dadhood. And I will crush it with that same exact energy in the gym because that energy is within me. Just an example. Oh, well, Um, then in that case, if it's just like that, I go the other way. See, I go to the gym and I believe that I can do fucking anything. I believe that I can do more reps than Howie and Brandon at any mm -hmm, fucking weight. mm Mm-hmm. And if they set the bar, I'm going to fucking smash it. And yes. I'm going to do whatever it fucking takes. That pretty much to defines To be number you. one. Lead, lead the fucking you. pack. That's what mm-hmm. I do. And so I go in there and I tell myself, my brain, I always tell everybody, your mind will give out first. Your mind will give out before your mm-hmm. body does. And it happens all the time to me. If I'm in there by myself and I'm not motivated like tonight, I walked out early. I was tired. I wanted to go home. I wanted to be a dad and a husband because that was the area I was feeling not enough in. My mind wasn't in it. So I just fucking quit. I'm like, nope, not tonight. I need to be focused. I'm going to come back and smash it tomorrow. But you said you'll but, take your gym power. But and- I will take the times when I'm like a fucking animal and I crush it. And that's like when you guys do one of our programs, let's say you do Revolution, you do Genesis, you do Unleashed, or you're part of our Spartan army and you go through one of our programs, you set a goal and you crush it or you're going to crush it. You're determined to crush it and nothing is going to stop you. That is the energy I'm talking about. When you're in there and you're doing whatever exercise it may be and you're down to the last ounce of energy that you have and you still got five, six, ten more reps to go. Because if you're doing my shit, man, sometimes I give you 20 to 25 reps to do. And you guys know that. If you've done Genesis or if you've done Unleashed, you know I don't fuck around in that gym. And you know that it's coming down to supersets and drop sets and tri-sets. And sometimes you guys will do 45 reps depending on what it is. The point is... When you tell yourself that you are going to finish, when you tell yourself no matter what the cost, I am going to finish. I'm going to recruit every ounce of energy in my body. I'm going to recruit every muscle fiber 
every last bit of glycogen, every last bit of sugar in my body, and it's going to fucking happen because I am not going to lose, for lack of a better term. I am going to be the one that leads the fucking pack. Now, you take that and you walk outside the gym and you keep that mentality that you can do anything. You just smash that fucking work that you thought was impossible. Guess what? You get the fuck out of there. Now you go do something else that and you thought was impossible. And there's another way that you guys can transmute that. This is something that I do. This is not stealing from Gabe. Fuck, I'm on a roll, man. This is not stealing from Gabe, but did you guys feel that energy? Did you feel that power? There are times that I will be in the gym and I will absorb the power that is within my husband. I transmute it from him to me and I say, I've seen it done. Me too. Me too. Me too. Me too. And I hope that he sucks energy from me too in other directions. You can take it from somebody, not even taking it from them, but using it to synergize because energy is never created or destroyed. But it can be shared. But it can be shared. Absolutely. And it can be transmuted. And there's plenty of it to go around. Trust me. So, and keep in mind, these these techniques that we're giving you, you're not just going to be like, hey, got the E-factor thing dialed in. This is going to be a constant training process. So, use these techniques to help yourself succeed, but it could take years for you to get completely dialed in. We are still growing in this area. Um, but I love, just to like kind of sum everything up. I love something that I heard from Marie Forleo this week. It's so hilarious. She's like, more present engagement in your mind, more present engagement, less crappy thoughts. So uh, use that yeah. space between two thoughts to put in self-empowering beliefs and then go love yourself. So the E factor, not enoughness. Reaffirm yourself that you are enough. That's what this all boils down to. It's all bullshit. That's what this all boils down. It's all fucking bullshit that we tell ourselves. You get in your head, you're dead. Stay the fuck out of your head. Don't get sucked down the rabbit hole. Do whatever it takes to grab onto the top and pull yourself out of that shit before you get all the way down the rabbit hole and you're looking at those two fucking bottles. One says drink me, one says eat me. Don't fucking do it. Fuck the red pill and the blue pill. Just stay on top, guys. Don't buy into the bullshit that your brain tells you. Stay outside of your head. Positively affirm yourself. Remember to look yourself in that fucking mirror every day and tell yourself that you're enough. That's what I do. And it fucking works. And we are changing the fucking world one day at a time. If you're listening, if you're with us right now, we're calling you out to do the same exact thing for other people. You be strong. You be the leader. You inspire and motivate. We're counting on you to affect those around you in a positive way. Now go out there and change the world. For more free information on fitness, nutrition, and bodybuilding, visit us at www.bodyspartan.com. I'm a man with a plan, understand?